Yeah, uh, thanks very much. So, yeah, I, I work with a company called Keep. I'll tell you what they do in a couple of minutes' time. But, but we have this kind of premise that, that happiness is, uh, is really important, which obviously in the uh, current kind of economic situation is not something that will come as a massive surprise to, to a lot of people. So, so why is this the case, right? So the way that we kind of look at the world is that it's, it's made up of, of thousands and thousands of different moments, right? Billions of them that, that billions of people have on a daily basis, you know, in, in tons of, of different ways. And, and they can come in a, a number of different places, right? So, so some people are fans of football, and if you're a fan of Manchester United, I apologize. If you're a fan of Manchester City, then I also apologize. Um, I had hoped that we would maybe have an Irish sporting moment that I could share with you because I'm Irish, but um, yeah. Sadly, those are, are pretty few and far between nowadays. But people have moments all the time, right? So sports is just one of them. And, and the reason that you know, brands spend so much money associating themselves with sports teams, in this case Etihad with Manchester City, or with the hoarding that you see around um, grounds, or the reason that they spend so much money sponsoring music uh, tours or, or musicians' tours and various different things, is they want to be associated with happiness, right? This has been going on for, for a very, very long time. So making people happy is, is baked into all of these kind of games and apps that we use you know, on an ongoing basis. So I don't know how many people here use Path. Does anyone use Path? Yeah. OK, cool. <laughs> That's great. Um, a, because uh, Dave Morin, who, who started Path, is an investor in Keep, and also because it's a brilliant application. So Path, um, and they did a really good talk at South by Southwest where they talked about happiness. Um, and, and it was part of uh, happiness being the new currency. And, and Pat spent a lot of time talking to psychologists and behavioral econo economists before they launched, looking at the five different kind of base emotions in uh, human nature. And there's happiness, sadness, surprise, love, and anger. Um, and anger is, is the one that they haven't put in, actually. Um, and it, it, as a digression, I think they should. But um, so if you look at Path, it has all of this happiness baked into it, and it's, it's done in real time. If you look at Foursquare, they do the same thing, where they allow you to become the mayor of your local cafe or the restaurant that you go to all the time. Or if you so choose, you can become the mayor of your office uh, if you want to broadcast the fact that you spend a lot of time there. So all of these things are, are baked into to applications nowadays, none more so, obviously, than games. Right, so I, I don't know how many people here play games on an ongoing basis on their phone. Is anyone playing a game now, for example? Because if you were, I mean, I'm not going to be annoyed, right? It's my job for people to play games and get rewards from them, as you'll find out in a minute. But Angry Birds, so how many people have seen people on a bus or a train or on public transport or just in public or in an office very obviously flicking birds in various different directions, right, and getting frustrated? So I get the tube in London all the time, and I frequently see people sitting, and you can see them pulling their finger back, and there's a specific kind of finger-pulling motion, and people stick their tongue out a little bit and kind of bite it like this to show that they're concentrating. So I see people miss their tube stop all the time because they're so determined to get these three stars. Right? And so much so that, and this is slightly embarrassing to admit, I play a tennis game on the iPhone. Right? I, I, as you can tell, I'm not very good at real tennis on the iPhone world number one. Right, so I was playing it, and I won Wimbledon on my way over here the other day, and I was sat on the, uh, on the airplane, and I found myself doing the fist thing of like, yes, like I'd actually scored the point myself. And that's how good these games are now, is that they affect you on this deeply kind of emotional, emotional level. Right, and people are spending a huge amount of time playing games and, and interacting with them. Right? So we know the stats, right? Smartphone ownership is huge. You know, over 10% of people who own smartphones play games on a daily basis. 53% of people who play mobile games are female. The demographics are extremely positive for brands and agencies. They tend to be people who can you know, spend money on stuff. Um, and you know, if you now look at what people do on their mobile phone, 52% you know, of all mobile sessions are consumed by some sort of game. Right? So the amount of time that people are spending playing games and engaging with games is, is absolutely phenomenal. So basically, we looked at that with Keep and went, this is brilliant. We looked at a lot of the advertising models that were out there and thought, they're slightly interruptive, they're slightly disruptive, they take you out of your gaming experience so they pop you off to a browser, they'll take you to a download screen. Right? It's not a very kind of intuitive experience, it's not a particularly nice experience. So we thought, well, what happens when you have an achievement in a game? Right? You have a very positive, happy association with that achievement, you maybe put your hands over your head, you humiliate yourself on an airplane, you swear at the birds when they don't fly in the way that you intended them to. So it's a very powerful moment. And we thought, well, in the real world, when you have an achievement, you frequency, frequently will get a reward for it. So why should that not be the case with the games that you play? 
And that's basically where we, we came up with the idea for keep. So our take is every achievement deserves a reward, and, and that's what we do for, for people now. We give them real rewards for their achievements in, in, in games and, uh, and applications. So this the little video will show you how it works. The achievement is a natural pause in play. It's when you've accomplished something meaningful. It's also when you're the happiest. I passed that level that I've worked so hard to pass, and I have this moment of happiness a moment of surprise and delight. Today, brands really only have two options if they want to be in mobile. They can buy millions of meaningless impressions that are essentially banner ads that ruin the user experience. Or they can have deep, costly, and time-consuming integrations with apps that they have to build relationships with. Advertising doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be interruptive. People don't have to hate it. The notion of reciprocity is the idea of someone getting a reward for doing an action in something they're already doing. We figured out that having this reciprocal piece where you can give someone something back, that people, A, would like it, B, don't feel like they're interrupted, and C, actually have this positive feeling attributed to the brand in the first place. And advertisers are loving that. Advertising can be something that can give back, that people can actually love. So um, that's, that's basically what we do. So our take is that, that we found this achievement moment and, and we're now rewarding people for it. And I'll, I'll show you very quickly what we do. We give people real rewards. So hey, you can get a Starbucks coffee, you can get a can of Pepsi, you can get a voucher. Branded moments, if brands don't have something they can physically give away, you can give people in-app currency, digital downloads, various different things. Swarm allows you to compete against lots of people. So we have games that have hundreds of thousands of daily active users. They can all compete against one another. These are the metrics. The click-through rates are enormous compared to mobile ads, up to 53 to 60% for some. Email open rates are, are really big as well. For the Swarm we did for the John Carter movie for Disney, 15 seconds left, 380,000 people playing it over two days in the US alone, right? which is a phenomenal number. Um, we're in, in about... Uh, 350 games and applications uh, globally, reaching tens of millions of people every month globally, um, have worked with some of the people you saw there, like Best Buy and Sears and Pepsi and Sony Music, uh, largely in games to start with. We're now in fitness apps as well, so if you complete a, a workout and exercise or map my run or some of those things, we can also give you a, a reward for your fitness. And, and yeah, those are my details if you want to uh, get in touch, and, and that's what we do. Thank you very much for, for your attention. I gotta say, um, one of the reasons we invited you because it's such a great product, such a great idea, so simple that yeah, when I win something, here's my question to you. Facebook, um, as you say path, is it a North American thing that they don't want any bad, right? Facebook does not have a dislike, they should. You can like something, but you can't dislike it. Path is all happy. Everything's this happy world, but yet there are lots of times when we're like, I'm not happy. Pandora, for example, I'm like, I don't like this song. So why is it when it comes to social media, and more importantly around games, if I don't like something, if it's an achievement that I don't get, why wouldn't you also be advertising then? And why isn't there, why isn't there more dislike? Yeah, I, I, I never really understood that, actually. I don't know if anyone used turntable.fm. Oh, I love turntable. So turntable is brilliant, and it was brilliant because you could just basically flame anyone who put on a really crap song. Um, and you could dislike it to the extent that the song would be, like it would go to the next song. I never understood why we don't have more dislike. I think if you look at other media, right, if you look at TV in the, the 50s, it gave us Monty Python because TV was so straight-laced and absurd, mm -hmm. it gave us Monty Python. If you look at, you know, The Simpsons came out of the same thing, South Park came out of the same thing, Rockstar Games and Grand Theft Auto came out of video games being a little bit too cutesy in the kind of Nintendo world. I'm not sure if it's necessarily gotten there with social yet. I think mischief is still missing a little bit. It, it's, it's starting to come into it, and I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Facebook will never have yeah. a dislike button. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in the future, Path acknowledged that fifth basic human emotion, because I think there's an appetite for it. I mean, we, we, a, a couple of years ago, I built a game called Farm Villain that was a spoof Farmville game, and it allowed you to like salt your neighbor's earth and give them mad cow disease and do all these horrible awesome. things. Yeah, we got like a, it, it went bonkers, right? Because it was in the middle of the Farmville phase, and it just showed us that there were millions of people who had an appetite for mischief. People are dark. And yeah, you know what, here, here's my, you know where I'm going with this, right? So if I do badly on a game, which I do on a regular basis, do you guys give me an ad when I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm sorry you failed, right? So we, we can. It's the, do the, you? We haven't because 
Mm -hmm. uh, there are very few brands who want necessarily to be associated, associated with failure at this point. So <laughs> what, what our job is at the moment is educating brands and agencies about what we do and saying, you know, you can reward a whole bunch of different things. So you can be the fastest or be the best, but what's wrong with rewarding average? Right? Or, or what's failure. wrong with rewarding failure? Because you know you learn from it, you come back, you do more. So we are getting there. It's just finding someone who so will buy finding into the, the brands. Idea. Brands always want to be positive, right? It's, but it's, there it's are some brands idea. out there. I'm sure, like something like Red Bull would probably want to get something. You failed, or there's probably a brand. What's a brand out there that would want to acknowledge failure? Doritos. Doritos, Doritos would be like, you suck. Have a Doritos. Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone here works for Doritos, you know, please. No, they they don't. <laughs> trust me. But Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Excellent job.